ended up after the foul that she is in the title match. Let's see if she can win her fourth title from the number two position. It appears Carol Norman has figured out lane 41 by her uh, performance in the 10th frame. And just that, she comes up. She moved in a couple boards, Denny. You could tell by her angle to the pocket. She's playing more around the second arrow now, not pointing the ball up the pocket so much. 12,600 for first, 6,300 for second, and so on down the line here in the $70,000 Columbia 300 Open. And you see this pendant here, the diamond pendant that was given to Donna Adamek by the good folks here at Holiday Lanes. And they gave one to Tish Johnson as well. So every year, whoever wins this event will receive one of those beautiful pendants. And uh, Donna right now is looking for a matching set. Oh, it was wonderful to give it to uh, all the past winners and, and a tradition to carry on. They also gave one to Connie Smoot, uh, uh, the wonderful sponsor, Columbia 300. That's right, the vice president of marketing for Columbia. She's on hand here this evening. Don Animek coming out very strong, just crunches the pocket in the first frame. A player you'll see playing a little bit more of an angle like Leanne Barrett. However, that one, she did not get out of it clean. Basically uh, came around it too much. She looked down at her thumb. Ah, there's our good friend Connie Smoot. Looking pretty nice tonight, huh? I like that outfit. Beautiful. Yeah. Told her we were in uh, coordination this evening yeah. with our clothes. A little red and black, uh, getting ready for that Halloween season. <laughs> you guys planned that out, all right. I think Donna probably feels fortunately, Isla, that shot wasn't a good one, although she's still trying to get a feel for this pair of lanes. Got out of it without a slip, and she ends up in the space. Carol Norman making some uh, major career decisions here recently. Uh, she turned 30. It's been a big year for her. She said, uh, I'm thinking about uh, finishing out the spring of next year and possibly going back to school. Uh, I'd like to major in business management and still stay in the bowling somehow in bowling industry. So she's looking at uh, life beyond the tour. Well, she said she's given it a, a good nine-year shot. She's enjoyed some success, won three titles, won the U.S. Open. But uh, sooner or later, you have to start looking and other opportunities. I started off as a psychology major in college and then came out here on the tour. But, uh, yeah, very much wants to stay involved in the bowling industry. And maybe she could be one of those people that works as uh, a general manager for somebody or goes to work for one of the corporations and still gets a chance to play in four or five tournaments a year. Ah, this lady right here, too, just absolutely worked from the finish of this tournament last year until the end of this one this year to promote it do everything that you possibly could do to make it a success and uh, what they have here. Jam-packed crowds all week long. Oh, wonderful crowds last night especially. Uh, they added some uh, money to the prize package. They donated money to charity. Doing it the right way. They are. Really involving the whole state. Had over a thousand in their pro-am. Carol Norman and Donna Adamek for the championship. In case you've just joined us, a rather unique evening. Leanne Barrett won the first couple of games and looked and appeared to have won the semifinal game with a strike in the 10th frame on the second shot, but she fouled. The foul lights have been turned off here. Renee Fleming was the foul judge, and uh, so Carol Norman gets a chance to bowl for a title. You see Donna Adamek's uh, arm brace. Well, we'll take a look at that in a minute as we look at uh, Carol Norman's spare conversion, a very difficult spare here uh, this week as well as every week. As mentioned, Don Adamek's arm brace, uh, she is not having any injuries to her arms at this point, but what this brace does is keep her from locking her elbow when she comes straight back. So it's basically for, uh, for uh, protection purposes. Well, it worked for Earl Anthony. Yes, it did. He never had the arm straight, right? Well, when, uh, and he didn't even need a brace, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Donna locks it, then she does develop some pain in the elbow. So uh, she has worn this brace for a number of years now, and uh, it seems to have been working quite well for her. Up quickly, left-hand lane posed a problem in the opening shot. A double here would go a long way. Good speed. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's a classy shot because you know what she's done all week long, Hurley Island? Every pair of lanes is different in this particular bowling show. You don't she, have to tell me, oh, Denny. <laughs> she has made the subtle adjustment and quickly all week long. That's why she's the leader. Well, one of the best players on, on tour, really, for um, changing lanes, changing equipment quickly. I, I 
followed her, Denny, and I noticed she might have two opens in the first five frames, but she always seemed to uh, string together uh, some strikes and still pull the game out. And uh, her scores were remarkable for what we were bowling on. Miss Q for Carol Norman in the fourth. She was trying to battle and find some kind of a shot, a little consistency to put a little pressure on Donna Adamek, although right now in the fourth frame, it wouldn't appear she's going to be able to do so. She's down by 26. Carol Norman really at this point having to make excellent shots. She does not have a lot of room to the right. She cannot go away with the ball. It will not come back. If she pushes the ball up towards the pocket, it hooks up high. A perfect conversion here. She hits on the left side of the head pin, throws the head pin right into the 10 pin. And a big sigh there. Uh, not an open frame, something she does not want to give to Donna at this point. Last two counts, six and six. <laughs> Boy, going to start hitting the pocket. More speed here. This is direct play here. <laughs> she leaves the solid seven. Boy, gutsy shot that time by Carroll, who just reared back and threw that one hard. Once again, Carol playing very direct right in the track area, right around that second arrow, maybe around the 12th board on that shot. The ball coming up flush. Four pin just lying down, not taking out the seven. It did not do its job. Fair up in the fifth. Got Adamant working on a double. Would extend the lead to 37 if she strikes on this shot. And the right-hand lane has been a good one thus far. 18 career titles, third on the all-time money list. Regardless of where she finishes here tonight, she will surpass the $400,000 career earnings barrier. Boy, an exact replica of the shot that struck in the third, but a solid 10 here in the fifth. Don Adamek wins here tonight. She will also get within uh, $5,000 of Leanne Barrett and she will become the second high titleist for the year with two titles. And you can see there her elbow slightly bent, just not completely locked. And there is a difference between locking your elbow and just slightly bending it. Sometimes it doesn't appear to be that way. Like a miniature version of Robocop down there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly that, the miniature version. She stands about five feet, <laughs> no, about yeah. five feet, two inches. Power packed up by 26. 